Come on, buddy. That was Roger's motivational talk for his body as part of his warm-up. We play most weeks, and the results are pretty even, but he tends to suffer with tennis elbow and a number of other aches and pains during and after playing. To try and understand why he might have a problem like tennis elbow, I would start by looking at the position of his feet in the hitting stance. With his right leg forward, he's limiting his ability to load into the ground and to turn his right hip into court to initiate the stroke. This is a better position for the right leg, but he still seems unable to load into the ground sufficiently to initiate the hip turn. As you can see, his hips and shoulders turn together as a unit, blocking into the ball and leaving his arm strung out to take the full force of the impact. What should happen is as the hip turns forward, it allows the shoulder to complete the backward rotation of the arm. So you just said that's a great exercise, just turning. Turning and just dropping that down, because then you're opening up everything, aren't you? In tennis speak, it's the flip into the slot. So his movement at the hip is limiting his external rotation at the shoulder. But what's happening at the wrist? Have you got that there? Have you got more into the wrist? Right. Have you got more flexion in the wrist? Right. Have you got more drop of your arm in that position? Have you got more extension through there? Yeah. And have you got more ulnar deviation or radial deviation? Yeah. And have you got more rotation of that? Because that's what you're going to be testing. Yeah. Whole body routines will also help you to improve your range of motion in these key areas. Then you can give them exercises to work better. Right. To give them more, so use the whole body to actually work it. Right. So that, then they, that would be okay then? That's too. fine, absolutely. Yeah. They can use that as an exercise, and then they can use it with the weight as well of the arm, just to kind of get mm. into that position. Because I know, I know that is a problem. So if your range of motion is limited in the take back, what does it mean for the forward swing? I know that I've got to drive that through linear, right. but actually it's coming mainly from the shoulder in an external position. Right. External rotating position. Yep. So it's going to be through. Can I actually, can I just get there? Right. Here's your easiest test. Yeah. Stand there. Can they do this? I have some of the problems that Roger has and some that he doesn't but I'm continuing to use these routines to improve my range of motion. I've got some, some glitch. I know all of this and I end up playing here. Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't, you haven't got that. I haven't come through. And it's most likely that carrying angle at your elbow. Because do you remember we did this? Yeah. You had to bend your arm here. You didn't yeah. have that way of deviating through that. Yeah. Because your arm is at a different angle to the center, right. just straight down. So that's the one I've got to really work on. Even keep it straight. Keep it straight. Just test it out. Does that just get their wrist? So like Roger, I understand the technical requirements, but my body's range of motion is a limiting factor. Am I, am I compensating when I'm able to get through? A limited range of motion would certainly be a barrier to developing good technique and it might in some cases lead to chronic or acute injury. That one felt a little bit more... Like you're dropping. Yeah. So, this is what I'm talking about though. Let's get Roger's it. limited range of motion at the shoulder and at the wrist leaves the one remaining moving part in his arm, the elbow, to take all of the strain. Working on his range of motion will certainly help his elbow and may even help him to beat me more often. <laughs>